Hey folks, what's up? Welcome to this video about error boundaries. So error boundaries are very useful and I personally always use at least one of them in uh, my React applications. And as it already says right here, uh, when React crashes, you get a blank page and I can demonstrate that. Uh, right here, I got a very simple app, it has a little bit of styling, the background is black. And uh, what happens in React if your app crashes like really bad uh that will cause your pretty much all the components to unmount and that will result in just a blank page right there's nothing to see there and this is i think uh, a good use case for uh bringing in the error boundary to prevent that because your users you know they won't have any idea what's going on of course if you would open up your console you probably will see some errors but hey users don't do that uh, generally speaking so um, let's actually demonstrate that. So let's say, you know, an error occurred in our code. I will just now throw a new error. Now I will see that whenever I save this, because we're in uh, development mode, uh, you will see this. But in production, you won't see this. You will see this. Okay. A blank screen. Nothing there. So we can use the error boundary to ensure that if our app crashes, we at least have some fallback UI to uh, fall back to. And we can use a, an error boundary for that. And currently you cannot use uh, error boundaries in like with functional components. So you have to use class-based components and that's because um, we need this uh, component lifecycle method, which is get derived state from error and component did catch uh, which uh, which we are not going to use in this video but if you want to use that that's also not uh, available for functional components so what i will be doing um, i will copy this code right here and i will create a new component so i'll make a folder called components and in there i will make an error boundary dot tsx component and in here I will paste the code. And now the first thing I will do is I will export the error boundary. So I will say export default error boundary. I will remove this and import that from React. And now as for the typings go, um, it's expected that we first pass the props type and then the um, the state type. So I will create a new interface right here. I will say error boundary props, which I'll just leave empty for now. And we also have error boundary state, which is not empty because that contains the has error property, which is a boolean. And now I can pass these right here so yeah there's a little bit uh old school react you could say uh doing class-based components but remember whenever you use a class-based component and you want to use typescript with it first you have to pass the props and uh, then the uh, state type uh so i will also pass the um props type to the props in the constructor and we will not be needing the component at catch, so I will remove that. And I also don't need the uh, error property in the get derived state from error, so I'll remove that as well. I will remove this comment and this one too. And now when I save it, uh, we got our component without errors. And I will navigate to the index component and I will sh make sure that I wrap the app component in the error boundary component, okay? So I will say, let's uh, go error boundary. There we go. And now I can import the error boundary like so. And now when I save it and uh, refresh the app, you will see that now we got something went wrong, okay? So whenever um, our React app crashes and it would 
essentially unmount all the components we are now guaranteed that something went wrong will uh, be shown and in a real case scenario you would probably say uh, hey if this is happening um, uh, multiple times then please contact our support or something like that but i think this is much more useful for your user to understand what's going on because when they land on that blank screen they might think they you know the the app is in a loading state or something like that so that was it pretty much for error boundaries uh although i want to say that you can use error boundaries also for let's say we have in our app component uh let's say we have some components in here you know you can also wrap those in uh, an error boundary okay so you can make uh, multiple error boundaries in your application and make sure that whenever a component crashes uh, it falls back to the fallback ui that you provide in the error boundary so i hope you enjoyed watching this video um, thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one